Hi, I'm Claire and this is my husband Nick. We met in an online chat room in 2001 and ended up getting married in 2006. We're a fairly normal, hard-working couple who love travelling and enjoying a drink or two. In early 2020, we decided we wanted a whole new life-changing challenge. So we said goodbye to our jobs. We sold our Wiltshire farmhouse we packed up our things and made the move to France. In early 2001, I went back to the UK to finalise our house sale and pick up my Arga. I was on Facebook on an Escape to the Chateau fan club page when I saw this advert. I messaged Nick the advert, curiosity got the better of him and he went and arranged a viewing. With the instructions from me, I trust your judgement, if you think I'll like it, put in an offer. The offer was accepted and we finally got the keys on the 10th of June 2021. Join us and our dogs Merlo and Flora as we renovate our Maison de Maitre. So we're out for a lovely Sunday drive and uh, driving home we've just stumbled across these mounds of grape skins that have been Pressed, haven't they? Mm. And then uh, chucked into a big heap. So obviously once they've extracted the juices from the grapes, they then have to dump all of the waste somewhere. And it's a shame that you can't smell this because it, it just smells of wine. It's fantastic. Uh, here, if you look closely on the ground, you'll be able to see that the actual skin's of the grapes but yeah it just it stinks of wine how fantastic so here they are harvesting the grapes and the tractor is pulling machine that goes along and shakes all the grape vines and takes the grapes off of the vines and then behind me there is a tractor with a trailer on the back that occasionally goes behind this machine and the sheets will pour the grapes into the trailer. So I'm in Rue Principal um, as you can see and at the moment the shutters for that window and that one and that one well they're all in the shutter workshop and they're the last of the normal shutters apart from we got three up there left to do um, now yes they've got hinges and things so you might think that I can take them off I'll take you inside and show you why I can't now upstairs in an attic area this is above our bedroom in what we think was once upon a time um, used to um, have pigeons nesting. We think this because this area here has got wire mesh over it. There's a window they could have been let in and out of because they like to go and fly around. And these boxes on the side would make perfect nest boxes for them. Anyway, not up here to talk about that. Up here to talk about the shutters. So, um, actually, let's have a look. Well, this is one of them. Um, it's got insulation here. Oh. So, um, yes, I could open that one. Um, take it off and then this will just be open for however long I wonder let's see because Claire would love to do these shutters but she doesn't want to go up the ladder to do them so I said I would but she was very hoping that we could open them and oh my god there we go right well I think I'll uh take this pair off and then go next door and see if I can do the same next door. Well I fitted a board over the opening. There is no window there. It is only to attic space which has more holes in it than a colander. 
um, although it's dry at the moment. Um, all the tiles are in place. Anyway, I put a, a board over the window just to stop, hopefully stop owls and things from coming and moving in while the shutter's out of the way. Um, I am going to get the shutter workshop to <coughs> prioritise these three. I've only taken one off, I've got to go through this doorway and uh, see if I can take the other two off. And I don't know that I've shown you through here yet. Um, in fact, we hadn't come, we didn't go through this doorway for several months after we bought the house. So, uh... so this is just more attic space. This is directly above the um, dressing room, and then we've got the two skylights that um are the weird things that um go to the room that uh, is around the bathroom so up here um again it's just attic space but we've got the two shutters there and there oh hello flora what have you done coming up here? Right, I'm going to, I think, take those two off, just the same as I did the first one. Okay, well, that was actually easier than I thought. I didn't think I could even get to those shutters from the inside. So there you go. <coughs> they're all off. And, uh, well, they're in a, an extension of the shutter workshop because the current shutter workshop um, is at capacity. But... New week and a new start on my final shutters. The tiny, tiny baby shutters from near the roadside that Nick's managed to get down this morning. So, without further ado, shutter time. The final countdown. The log burner here in the kitchen. Um, I'm guessing because of the uh, temperature change that we're going to uh, light it very soon. So going to give the flu a quick sweep, make sure that's all clear, make sure nothing's taken up nest in it over the summer period, um, and it'll be safe and ready for lighting. together good as new and you didn't make anything dirty and i i didn't make anything <laughs> dirty and i don't look like too much of a coal miner so last night we went out to the cinema for our first french cinema experience It was really nice and we went to go and watch uh, Don't Worry Darling with Harry Styles in it, which was really quite good. Um, the only thing that was really negative was on the back of my seat there was chewing gum. Yeah. So I've had my jeans in the freezer today trying to get the chewing gum off the back of them. Yay! Lesson learned. Cinema. Always check the chair first. Well, we're just about to visit Claire's parents um, as they have succumbed to that virus that's been going round for a couple of years now. So uh, we've got some provisions. We told them, stay inside, we'll drop it on the garden table. The important things like dishwasher salt and cat food. <laughs> they don't even own a cat. <laughs> they don't own a cat. <laughs> We've left him in, inside, and look, look, I'm going to put a smile on his face. Where is, where is Madame? Barbara! He's just perked up all of a sudden. <laughs> I think they'll be all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
24 hours later and these are all done and ready to go back up. Woohoo! Are we ready? One, two, three! And there we go, another job done. Now it's just on to the finishing touches for these ones and the finishing touches of these. So I think by the end of this week we can call it quits completely with shutters. Yay! So I'm back in the maze under Atra. Um, it's about time I got on with some work in here. Um, today uh, my project is to fit three more double sockets in this bedroom. It's on the middle floor. It's above the bedroom that um, various visitors have stayed in. I'd already fitted two double sockets in this room a number of weeks ago when our friends John and Sue were here. I was doing the electrics whilst John was doing the, uh, <clears throat> the putting of the window. I'll just have a little look at the window and see how it is. Oops. Well, I must say John, I can't see it from your house. There you have it, another socket fitted. They are fiddly. Um, it doesn't help that the two individual sockets aren't pre-wived together, which is a pain. But anyway, that's how it is. And if the wire ends aren't quite long enough, they don't just clip in, they fall out. So um, it takes just a bit of time to get it right. But that is now another socket. So, two left to do in this room and then I can wire them all together. So we have one, two, three, four double sockets. And we don't have one here because, uh, as you might be able to tell, the plaster came off the wall far too easily. So um, I've just patched it. Um, uh, I will need to do a little skimmer plaster over that. That's just a bit of lime render. Um, so that's going to take a, a week or so to go off before I'd want to even think of plastering it. Um, I might get all the other ones wired in in the meantime. I just need to connect them together uh, in the room next door where the wire comes from downstairs. And then get that in to the consumer unit and then as and when I've done that socket I can um, connect in that. Ah, what a pain. Yes I've finally given in just testing the fire to see that it works having been swept was it yesterday anyway uh, yeah it works I'll let you go out now shall I. <laughs> in the kitchen it started filling up with smoke might need a new brush, darling. Well, considering you like you lit the fire, you would make sure that there was nothing on top of it. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> Just lost it in the yard. <laughs> Not going to do any damage there, is it? We are out and about this afternoon, and there's a very good reason why. Um, as you may remember from previous episodes, when we originally walked into this room, on top of the toilet was this. Now, we don't know whether it's live or not. It doesn't look as though anything's happened to it. It's quite heavy. At some point, we're probably going to try and take it to the police station. I don't really want to put it in the car. <laughs> We found something in, in our attic and um, the advice from a friend of ours, John, when he came over last month was that 
he should really um, see what the police make of it. Don't Your diagnosis, it. please. No. It looks like it's been fired. What's inside? Oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's no money in there either. So. <laughs> <laughs> but this hasn't been fired. What's that? This is a shell. Oh. That's only the propellant. Oh. This hasn't been fired. So you fired. drop that, it goes bang. Might do. I don't, I don't know. It depends what, what it's got. But it's got a winding fuse here. I'd be very careful with that. Make of it. Yeah. Um, could be dangerous, might not be. So we've come to the police station um, with photos of the item. There's Claire's hand, just to have it that little technical scale, a hand <laughs> and a couple of door handles. Yay. Um, they'll appreciate that. I, I redid it with, with some tape measure type stuff. Anyway, come to the police station to see what they say. Well, off you go. <laughs> He, he has, he I'll has. I'll it's yours in case they want to lock anyone up. It's oh, it's yours. mine. Yeah. It's mine. All right. Okay. Yeah. Because I, I, you know, I made a World War One bomb. Bless him. He's been Googling how to say words like shell and explosive for a while now. <laughs> Don't put it in your pocket, they say. <laughs> Yes, um, well, they're not rushing out to our house. They've given me the phone number for um, the prefecture in La Rochelle who deal with things like bomb disposal. <laughs> it's easy to think, it's easy to, to think that that's still live. He said, don't, don't, don't touch it and uh, don't put it in your pocket. <laughs> 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 So, so I've got to uh, call the prefecture. Well, there's the next step then. <laughs> you look so happy. Oh, good, good test of my French, isn't it? <laughs> How do you say bomb? <laughs> bomb. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, that was the prefecture in La Rochelle. Um, the, was given the phone number by the local police. Um, so apparently that's where the bomb disposal people are. A bit different to how it works in England, but anyway. Um, they take my name and number because the man that deals with it is on the phone at the moment and they're going to call me back. <laughs> <laughs> they don't... They don't seem very, they don't really seem in a rush, do they? But <laughs> oh. <laughs> here I am arriving at a grey Dover. So before um, I went to England, I had um, been into the local police station who then just gave me the phone number for um, the prefecture at La Rochelle who have a department who deals with munitions and things. Um, I rang and left a message and but um, they did re return my phone call um, but I was away. So I'm going to give them a quick call now and uh, see what they want to do about it. Uh, bonjour, est-ce que c'est le département pour dégagement? Uh, dégagement? Uh, si vous avez uh, une pièce d'artillerie? Uh, oui. Uh, je ne sais pas qui. Um, um, Je, je, uh, je, 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 je suis visité uh, la, la, la police à saint jean d'Angely et, et il me donne uh, le numéro de téléphone pour vous appeler. Um, je, je ne sais pas quoi faire avec uh, la pièce. Uh, non, pardon. Uh, on s'en fait le nombre. Uh, 49, 72. Très bien, merci beaucoup. Très bien, merci beaucoup. Au revoir. Ok, 
going to call me back. Oh, I didn't know what our phone number was. <laughs> we can tell you, Miss. Come on, don't you do it, Oui, oui, j'habite ici, euh, oui, oui, je reste ici maintenant. Euh, oui. Si, si quelqu'un peut m'appeler euh, en avance, c'est meilleur parce que, you know, euh, je fais les courses, etc. Au revoir. Uh, in the next week or two, they'll uh, come and get it. Does somebody ring? Or? Yes, they're going to call in advance. They got the address and everything, so, um, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, they're fine. Ring in advance and then come round and deal with it. This morning we're up early because there's somebody coming from the bomb squad. So here it is for the last time. We've been keeping it. <laughs> A little while now on this mantelpiece and yeah it's time time for it to go this is not uh, it was not used okay because look here yes the belt belt yeah Since you? our you friend said there belt? would be lines yes. if it yes. went through a gun no, no, no. Yes. Yes. yes 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 so inside i think we have uh, okay. Okay. um uh, uh, what Oh, explosive inside. Yeah. So, mm. we. Uh, what will you do with it? We, we, we ah, excuse me, sir. We're gonna explode it okay. after. Yeah. With a lot of uh, sh other shell. Okay. Yeah, in a special uh, place. Okay. And uh, on, on the ground. A big yes. hole. Yeah. 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 Okay. We're going to put so. a lot of uh, another shell and big okay. one. And after, do you have uh, many like this? Oh, yes. Oh, Every right. day. Uh, and by your and bigger, by, uh, it's, yes. a, it's a small one. Then. Sorry, by <laughs> bigger. <Yes. laughs> so I have, uh, we have destroyed a, 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 a big bomb. Um, uh, two, two, two thousand, two thousand, two thousand leaves. Mm -hmm. The leaves, yes. uh, pound. No, 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 two thousand. One, 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 one ton. ton. One, one ton. ton. Okay. Wow. It was an American bomb, and yes. uh, last week yes. an English bomb. An English bomb. Yes. Uh, Five hundred uh, leaves. Uh, mm -hmm. Pounds? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pounds. Pounds, yes. Two, uh, 250 kilos. Oh, wow. Yes. 2050 kilos. Yeah. Wow. And okay. from the Royal. Royal. Yeah. 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 So. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you. Yes, thank you. So. <laughs> yes, uh, it appears that um, that could have caused some damage. <laughs> So, the, yeah, two men from the bomb squad have uh, just been in and, uh, well, they've left us the bottom of the um, the, the shell, uh, but taken the top. Uh, it's an anti-aircraft yeah. thing, um, which hadn't been fired, had a fuse in it, so they felt it was live. And <laughs> but it's so, uh, finally it, gone. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> Feel a little bit safer now. We're not going to hurt ourselves. So. <laughs> Yeah. There we go. We always have an explosive time. <laughs>
So after that thrilling experience, I don't think it was the best market that we've been to, but it was very nice. You could say that I'm doing some market research. However, I will say one thing, the view from the market looking out over Ongluem is quite pretty. stop after lunch is Emmaus. He looks so happy. This is the one in Anglem where I found the curtains and it's massive. And I'm going to try and pick out some great stuff to show you. My trophy collection. <laughs> I think I've been rather good at everything I've ever done, as you can tell. There's a lot of very questionable second-hand mattresses here. I'll just wait here. When you finish, let me know. Hopefully I won't get fleas in the meantime. <laughs> Give me a weather report for so far today. Grey and wet. Is this a good time? No. To tell you that I've finished the shutters and that they're ready to go back up. <laughs> <laughs> um. You don't want to do that now? I've got some other jobs I could be doing. Do you want to wait until after lunch and see if it improves? Yeah. On a chilly autumnal day, your min pin may start to feel the cold. Make sure you light a fire to keep the min pin warm. Are you still cold? Are you? <coughs> Give your min pin a bone to play with. This will distract her from the cold and send out a warning to her brother not to mess with her when she has a bone. Merlo, has she taken your bone? If your min pin is still cold, you can give it a hot water bottle. Yay! And if your min pin is finding it really, really that cold, dress your min pin. Dress your wonderful min pin in a hoodie. Are you nice and warm now, princess? Yeah. And of course, don't leave your dachshund out. Remember to dress all dogs in your household, so no one feels left out. So there's a break in the weather today and I've managed to get all the shutters up on the house and we've got a new friend, look. I've never seen one of these. Hi. It's a praying mantis and apparently they live for about a year and they eat moths. So you're my new extra special friend and you can stay for as long as you like. Now, I'm sure that I've read somewhere about these that once the female has had her wicked way with the male, she then rips its head off and casts it to one side. No. No? <laughs> no. No? Why would you do a stupid thing like that? <laughs> Don't get any ideas. <laughs> oh, what a lovely pretty face you have for eating moths. Hello. Oh, you can stay. And I can finally tell you that 
all of the shutters on this side of the house are now complete. I have no more shutters to do unless there are some hidden shutters that I do not know about. It's a good day. On our visit to Anglo Market yesterday, we did buy something very nice and seasonal. We bought a kilo of these. Ah. Which in France are known as seps. Or to anyone else that wouldn't normally know, porcini mushrooms. So Further on in the evening, I've had a lovely shower. My mushrooms are cleaned and I'm ready to start dinner. Out of my pile, I have selected these three large porcini mushrooms for our dinner this evening. And I'm gonna be doing a really, really simple porcini mushroom tag. So I have all of my ingredients ready in front of me. I have a cheap bottle of white wine, some pepper, about half a kilo of seps or porcini mushrooms, all cut up roughly and ready to go. I've got some of my homemade garlic butter. Um, if you would like the recipe for this, have a look back at one of our past episodes. Also got uh, some Parmesan cheese and I've got some tagliatelle here. I've got my pan of water boiling away here, ready for me to drop the tagliatelle into it. And I've got a huge frying pan um, over high heat. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in some garlic butter, woohoo! No messing around, look at that go. With the butter starting to brown off nicely, I'm gonna add the mushrooms. Give them a nice stir round and just wait for them to cook. I'm now I'm going to add in a drop of white wine. Say drop, I like wine. <laughs> and I'm just going to simmer these mushrooms up or poach them slightly into this wine. While they're cooking away, I am going to take my tagliatelle. It's not fresh, it is packet, it'll do, it works, it's still nice. Uh, and I'm just going to pop that in to my boiling water. Oh, this smells lovely. So my pasta is now ready to drain and I'm ready to now move my pasta into the pan with my mushrooms now if you have cream and if you would like to add cream good time to add cream i'm not going to and now i'm just going to fold in all of the mushrooms and sauce just going to finish with a dash more wine and a nice serving of freshly grated black pepper. Mm. And now it's ready to serve. And then I'm just gonna finish these off with a handful of fresh parsley. Yummy. And a nice serving of Parmesan cheese. Hi. Hi. Welcome to Wine of the weekend. Well, we've got wine this week. Nice change. Yay! Um, this week we've got a flurry that, that we bought from um, an off license in Saint Jean d'Angely. I have actually opened this one to breathe beforehand. I did send you down to the cellar looking for a Pinot Noir as it would have gone really well with our seps this evening. We didn't have any. We didn't have any. 
We'll need to add it to the collection now. <laughs> so, we've had a really good week, haven't we? Have, we? we have, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and we've even gained... A pen holder. Way! <laughs> Vintage. Vintage. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this episode, um, please hit like, and if you haven't yet subscribed, if you do that, then that'd be great. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, or you can have a look at more information on our website at www.thexpatbutchers.com. So, mm, cheers. So, good week. Well, that's very nice. That looks delicious. We'll see you next week. Thanks Cheerio. for watching. Bye bye.